Are you having fun? Yeah, it's lovely out here. <laughs> it's a bit breezy. Today, we're in the dinghy for a bit. As you can see, the boat is on the beach, so we, we might be coming back and taking that out afterwards. The wind is supposed to get up a little bit, but it's offshore, so we should be fine. Um, making the most of it while we can. We're just going to go out the dinghy, pull a couple of pots and throw a couple of lures and see what we uh, can catch or don't catch. Check our single pots in the dinghy. Fog's coming down quite thick. We've got to be a bit cautious out here with the dinghy because we've got no uh, navigation apart from me. <laughs> right, remember, walk carefully on this boat. Oh, I hear something. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> You're learning every day, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Look at that one. Yep. Yeah. That is a cracker, that one. It's not been down that long either, has it? 24 hours. That's all you need. <laughs> yep. Right. He's a cracker that one, that's a male one that. And a little crab on the side. And a lady crab over there. There you go. Look at that one. It's a nice one that. Absolute stonker. Right. So just put it on the floor for a minute. I'll, I'll, ta I'll take it actually. His claws will be slow because he's big. There you go, look, there's my boot and there's the lobster. Nice big lobster just from the dinghy. That's all you need, a little dinghy, a couple of pots, good to go. Not that it's, it's, it's when there's so many pots, there's so much bait in the water, everything's feeding on it, and until those pots are cleared, you've only got uh, like less pots. Right, you've got to move because we are coming up. Chuck that out. Yeah, if you look at that, you'll see that he's got a crusher there. That is also a crusher. It's um, it's deformed at the bottom, but it is actually a crushing claw, that. So he's got two crushers, no cutting claw, this one. It does happen. It's fairly rare, but it does happen. I really enjoy going out in the dinghy and just pulling a few pots and fishing from a dinghy well, like this. Simple fishing. Yeah, it's it? so yeah, simple. it's just so nice just to And it's cheap on fuel too. <laughs> but no, it's really nice to um just get out in a little dinghy and fish a little bit like this. The 
grass, there's the lobster. We actually baited this one with crab in the hope of getting a ras because we uh, didn't have a lot of bait, so mission accomplished. as well. I thought it was going to be too small. There you go, another keeper. It's only got one claw, but it's been broken a while so you can see a tiny little one forming. But Yep, there you go. Another lobster, one in each pot. Ideal. The question is, who gets the big one? <laughs> well, well, there we are. <laughs> to be discontinued later. <laughs> we'll discuss that later. Yeah, that's well oversized. I don't know if you can see that, but that's like a centimeter over that one. Let's see, let's drop it there. onto these rocks out here and it's about like this standing on the rocks casting live eels so the last time I tried it I had a five pounder and a two pounder off there so it's been a little while since I tried it baby bass around the rocks here but usually they're that size what you want is the big one some years back you would have been catching two to five pound fish probably like I say I've had a five pounder off here just standing on the rocks here well, I had to walk across my waders to get up onto the rocks because there was too much water but once I got on it and then I was fishing the tide down yeah yeah as the tide went out they were nailing it so. well the few fish we had I think we had three fish I was with a friend who had one well, a little couple of pounds there. So the rod has now been handed to Rebecca. The pressure is on to catch the big fish. Now we've got we've got actually got a second rod there, Rebecca's rod's there, but um, we're only sort of like just chilling, casting the line out. We've only got this one though. We've got several others that I've got obviously the lure we caught on just a minute ago, that one. But no, we're just sort of floating around having a bit of fun and you know and and while there's only one of us fishing, and somebody gets to hold the camera. With that lure, one thing I did notice is, um, real slowly, when I hauled that one, I was literally just like that. I was just sort of, yeah. I was snoozing a bit. <laughs> now I was just doing it so slow that time when it hit it. That's why I struck it, because I was barely moving the lure. But you see that the way that was wobbling, if you slow that one down, it'll, it just is lovely little swimming motion, really gentle swimming motion. Say so sometimes overactive lures are not good. You quite often get it, people say, Oh, it's got an amazing action. Yeah, it's too much. I've had it before. If, if the lure is going out of control, the fish are like, What the hell? Oh, yeah, you, you, you try to really, you've got to strike it with those hooks because they're a bit big and rusty. But remember you're dealing with small fish so and not only that you were so close to the boat if you'd struck yeah. it you might yank the lure out as well so. but yeah it's you're dealing with small fish quite often in here so i mean there is big ones occasionally you'll get an eight pounder or something will suddenly pop up but in the most cases it's um when you strike kind of strike upwards a bit because otherwise you smack me in the face <laughs> near this giant splash as i go over the side <laughs> Thank you. 
See that? I did see that, yeah. Very small fish though. Mm -hmm. They're only probably six, six, eight inch fish those. But they're following it, so they have an interest in it. You just need a bigger one to have an interest in it. So there you have it, nice little trip out, a couple of lobsters. Uh, oh, I just found a pipe fish on the boat. What? Oh, little pipe fish. Put him back. There he goes, he's actually swimming off, so he's alright. He's got to avoid getting eaten on the surface like that, especially when you've got bass around here. Yeah, so we had a couple of nice lobsters, nice big one, male. Uh, another big male actually, although it doesn't look as big because the other one is so big. <laughs> just in the dinghy. Love a little trip out. One bass and Rebecca had one that grabbed it, but it unfortunately it came off just at the edge of the boat or what's the problem? That's the thing with small bass quite often, they don't necessarily yeah. hook properly. Right, we'll see you on the big boat. So we're out in the other couple of sets we've got in the bigger boat. We could have done them in the small one, but to be honest, coming here and we we're going to come out anyway, so we just want to take them in the big boat, these ones. We just got the other ones done because the boat was obviously dry. So. And we wanted to try a little bit of fishing with them. Rash and a conga. Oops. Right, well, we just had this lobster. I don't know, we, the camera just crashed, so um, I'm just going to show you it again. But there it is, about three, three and a half pounds. Might even be bigger, who knows? Just hold it up in your hand. Just don't cover the lobsters too much so people can see it. There you go, that's perfect. All right, it's got all the. Let it go. Let it go. All right, now pick it up. There you go. I mean, that is an absolute corker. Just in the bay as well. Right, we're gonna get these baited and uh, back down. Right, just about to try some uh, fishing for pollock. And the old mackerel if you want down there, but maybe pollock. Just with the lures. So we just moved marks. We're straight in, both of us. You've got to be right on the mark, it seems, around this bit. Yep. Little bubbies, though. <laughs> Throw this one back, I think. Way too small mine. But it's nice to see straight away. You might hear it's getting a bit windy as well because it's due to pick up offshore a bit. Just be a bit damp getting back, that's all. Well, we've moved off again. It's uh, getting quite breezy out here now, as you can probably hear. Uh, we'll, we'll spend a little bit longer and just see. Looks like Bream's off the menu. <laughs> I mean, it's big enough, but it's, it's you know, it's well and truly legal size. It's just that it's a bit too small, really. We want to, want to, want to get it. A... We want to get one a bit bigger. That's what we're after. Like a decent size one. Get a couple of decent fillets off of it. There we go, that's a better one. That's the one. That's the one, right there.
a little one. Nice. There you go. There's the uh, catch. It was only a short trip today. It was very rough out there further out. Got very sloppy. Nothing dangerous, just very, very sloppy. So as you can see, you can see how big that lobster is. That one over there is one centimetre over the size limit. So that'll give you some idea how big these other ones are. They are pretty big. And of course we had the bream we caught, or one of the bream, which is the larger one. And that'll go with the bass. And the bass is, I think the bass is around 44, 45, something like that. And we did have another one, which you saw throw back, and there was another one. But we only kept that one for now, so. Yeah. Not a bad little trip out. Anyway, we'll catch up with you on the next one.